At the turn of the year, Iran erupted in protests. Calls for regime change rocked Iran. For years, Iranian society has been like a powder keg waiting to explode. Iran's 80 million population is yearning for change. While the vast majority of the population lives in poverty, the mullahs spend the nation's wealth on supporting the Assad regime in Syria and spreading terror in Iraq, Yemen and elsewhere. Protests began over rising costs and economic corruption, but they quickly turned political. In a matter of days, the protests spread to 142 cities. The extensive nature of the protests and the pace of events rattled the Mullah's dictatorship, who resorted to brutal measures to crack down on protesters. They also brought down the Internet to prevent communication. Sadek Larijani, head of the judiciary and other officials, called for dealing harshly with the protesters, revealing the regime's fear of the expansion of the uprising. Many of current officials are the very people who were responsible for the massacre of more than 30,000 political prisoners in summer 1988. The guards have killed at least 50 people, some under torture, and have arrested more than 8,000 so far. <laughs> Regime's officials constantly attack the MEK for being the main force behind the protests. In a brazen and desperate move showing the regime's panic, Khamenei pointed out MEK as a driving force behind the protests. Hassan Rouhani demanded France to impose restrictions on MEK's legitimate activities in that country. MEK Network Inside Iran continues to play a key role in organizing the anti-regime protests and maintain the momentum despite massive suppression. They bypass regime's filtering of the Internet through various means. Simultaneously, a war of waves continues. The 24-hour Simoy Azadi satellite television provides information about the latest developments in the nationwide movement. Oh, that's what I'm